Okay, my wonderful friends. As you know, I have been going over and over for the last 15 years talking about the giants, the dragons, all these things that are on Earth, and literally everything that academia has pushed me down so that I, I really don't have much exposure. People are saying, oh, you keep saying the same thing. Well, I'm going to say it a hundred thousand times until somebody pays attention because it affects a lot of things, my friends. This is just not some spectacular dragon wall. There was dragons. Yes, there was. There was giants in the earth and on the earth after that. All, well, not all, but a lot of the things that were written in the past have shown to be pretty damn accurate. Now, what would that mean to you and to me and to your life? Would it mean anything? Well, people say, well, what does that mean to me? Well, let's think about it. Geology is 100% wrong. It's not a single thing in geology that is taught right now that's correct. History, pfft, that's obviously not correct. Mythology, we need to take another look at. Anthropology, totally wrong. Archaeology, pfft, out the door. All kinds of the mysteries in the past now are have to be re-looked at with this new evidence. Even human nature has to be re-examined because of the, the denial of reality. The truth means nothing anymore. It has, and, and even evidence and scientific facts, they, they don't overcome the menticide of the people that's m minds have been literally destroyed. And who destroyed them? Academia. All right? the, the universe we have to start thinking about it again. Evolution, that's not working. Creation, well, let's talk about creation. How did it all start? And then I say, go back to the ancient myths. Take a look at that. Well, what did they say? There's a lot of different variations there, yes. That's what we have to work out. That's what education is. That's what research is. You research the things that the people missed. And because of the things that they missed, not a single thing that you learn in school that's theoretical is correct now. Not one single thing. That's what it should mean to you. Okay, my friends, this is just a primer because I'm going to be doing lungs all over the earth, and I mean they get extremely large. Now, this is what they look like here now in an autopsy. That's a, a modern lung with an autopsy, and that's the tubing that goes into it. There's a thing they call the bagong pipes. We're going to be looking at those. These are the kind of mud fossil lungs we find. The black is the vein blood, and the reddish areas are the artery blood. And these are all the tubes that go inside. This is also a lung. I don't know what kind of creature it is. It looks almost like a human lung, but... And this part's broken off, which is the latch at the bottom that holds it to the body. And that stayed with the body. And these are all the tubing of the lung. That's just quite obviously a lung. Now, this, this is what lungs look like, right? It's like that. And this big tube comes down into here. And then they all spread out into all the rest of the areas. Now... They make a big, 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 huge deal. Scientists discover a unique new species of dinosaur with a distinctive eyebrow. <laughs> well, that's going to make a lot of eyebrows raise. Oh, boy, we're really fascinated about that. But giant humans, giant dragons, all mythology, t t discussing all that stuff, they couldn't care less. And here's, again, this is a human, uh, uh, yeah, it's a human lung. And here's one that's been fossilized in mud fossil fashion. That's the inside of it, all that little tubing I showed you. So we're, I'm going to be showing you so many lungs it'll blow your mind off. Now this is a friend of mine found this, Gary Evans, over in England. And at first when he saw it, he just saw something like this. I don't know whether he broke this off or what he did, but he got inside the lung and there it was. And then after about two weeks just laying around, this is how it turned. It, it, it was in a, This is the key with mud fossils. If they stay compacted in wet mud they don't even know they're dead <laughs> they don't even know they're dead this is the same stuff it's flesh wet mud is flesh and it was around uh, surrounded this and even the blood stayed in good shape look look this is this is red blood that's red blood 
These are the little tubing. You see the little tubes? That's red blood. Now, once it came out of the a wet and the mud, well, then it dried out. It would either dried out to be a rock in certain cases, but when they're saturated with salt waters, they seem to disintegrate. Fresh water, a little different. They seem to harden into stone, like this bone here. A bone, normally you would think that would rot away or something. No. In the mud fossils, they, they transition called nucleophilic substitution. I'm going to leave it to that for today because it gets very deep and it's very, very long. But this, to, to, be, to, to make such a big deal out of something like this and to overlook for 15 years that there were giants in the earth and on the earth and dragons and all the things they were talking about. And, and to be not allowed to understand that and to have academia stand against truth, that's not acceptable. All right, I love you all. Bye.